Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about acids and bases and different types of materials and uh, liquids like those and how they relate to the pH as a measure of the acidity of a different of a specific object. So let's go ahead and first of all define what we mean by an acid or a base. They are defined by hydrogen ions and the transfer of those hydrogen ions. So something that donates a proton, which is a hydrogen ion, to another object is an acid. The compound that accepts the proton is a base. So acids are losing a proton and bases are gaining a proton. Now we can also have neutral solutions which are neither acid nor base and those are ones that have equal concentrations of hydronium which is H3O plus and hydroxide ions which hydroxide is OH negative and those are ones that are exactly equally balanced between the hydronium and hydroxide is a neutral solution. So an acidic solution is going to have more hydronium and less hydroxide. A basic solution will have less hydronium and more hydroxide. So and let's look at how we can go ahead and measure these using the pH and in fact we have pH and pOH. The pH of a solution is the molar concentration of hydronium, remember that's H3O plus, in the solution. The pOH is defined similarly as the molar concentration of the hydroxide ion, the OH negative ion. And we define the pH to be minus the logarithm of the concentration of the hydronium ion. And you can invert that uh, using the laws of logarithms to say that the concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to 10 to the negative of the pH, 10 to the negative power of the pH. So that would tell you the concentration. So if you had something with a concentration of 7, or, or sorry, a pH of 7, which would be neutral, then you would have 10 to the negative 7th and that would give you the concentration then would be 10 to the negative 7th. Now we'll go ahead and look at an example of that but OH is defined similarly where it's minus log concentration of the hydroxide ion or inversely the concentration is given by 10 to the negative of the pOH. Now let's go ahead and look at a couple examples for these and first let's go ahead and look at the pH and pOH of pure water and in that case the hydronium ion has a molarity of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th at 25 degrees Celsius. And because this is pure water, they're going to be neutral. So they're going to have the concentrations are the same. So the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide are both 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. And the pH is then given by minus the log of the concentration of the hydroxide of the hydronium ion and that is then given by minus the log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. The log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th is negative 7 and the negative the opposite of negative 7 would then give us a pH of plus 7 and that signifies a neutral solution. Now we can do the same thing for the pOH and put our numbers in there and find out that of course the pOH will be exactly the same. That is the sign of a neutral solution is that the pH and the pOH will be exactly the same. Now we can go ahead and look at some uh, what we mean by solutions and the summary of what we mean here. First of all we looked at a neutral solution already. In that case the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide and the pH is therefore 7. Acidic solutions will have a negative pH or sorry will have a pH of less than 7 and basic solutions will have a pH of greater than 7. And what that tells us for an acid is that the hydronium concentration is greater than the hydroxide concentration. And for a base, the hydroxide uh, concentration is greater than the hydronium concentration.
Now we can look at a range of scales of these. And we see all sorts of different uh, measurements here, going from a pH of negative one down here, all the way up to a pH of 15. The pOH and the pH will always add together to give you 14. So if you know one of them, you automatically know the other. So we generally work with pH is what we tend to talk about. The pOH is just the opposite of that. So a neutral solution, pure water, would have a pH of seven. Uh, things like orange juice are acidic and would have a pH maybe in the range of about four. Your stomach acid closer to three. Uh, some of the other uh, lime juice even more acidic with a two and hydrochloric acid at one molar would have a zero pH extremely acidic. On the other side things like a baking soda would have a pH closer to eight. Uh, ammonia closer to 12 bleach pushing to 13 and sodium hydroxide at one molar would have a pH of 14. So we can look at some of the various different uh, things here. Now we say pure water that's not all water because we see that ocean water is slightly basic and rainwater is slightly acidic. So there are differences this that would be just plain pure water that would be the neutral solution with a pH of seven. Now we can look at a few more examples of these and how we can go about some calculations. So let's go ahead and look at the pH of stomach acid. So if we look at that as hydrochloric acid with a hydronium concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. Now if we go ahead and do that we know the equation for pH again it's just minus the log of H3O plus. And that is then given by, if we put the numbers in there, that it is minus the log of 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. And if you go ahead and put that in a calculator, you will find that that would be plus 2.92. I recommend as I'm going through these, uh, double check them. Check them with yourself and make sure you're getting the same numbers. That way, if you're working on problems for class, you will know that at least you have a, have a better idea of exactly uh, what you're supposed to be getting, that you can actually duplicate the numbers that I'm giving you. If you get something wildly different, then you may want to review the material here. So let's go ahead and look at another example. And let's go ahead and now cal calculate the hydronium ion concentration in blood that has a pH of 7.3. So now we're going to work this backwards. We know the pH is 7.3 and the pH is given by minus the log of the hydronium concentration. Now to solve that then we have to take the, the, to get the negative sign to the opposite side. So the negative sign comes over here. We're trying to solve for that concentration. So the log of the hydronium concentration is negative 7.3. And that means if we undo a log to undo a log, we raise 10 to that power. So if we raise 10 to the power of a log, we just have the concentration and we'd raise 10 to the negative 7.3 power. So we have our answer here, but not in the simplest form, because we usually do not use fractional and decimal exponents. So what we want to do is put that in our calculator to find that that means that the actual concentration would be 5 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. So that would be the hydronium ion concentration of blood with a pH of about 7.3. We can look at another example. We're going to look for the pOH and the pH in this case of a 0 0.0125 molar solution of potassium hydroxide. So we know that the concentration of OH, because we have the OH here, is 0 0.0125. And then the pH is negative log of the concentration of OH. So again, we just put that number in that we had here goes in here which gives us negative log of that number. And when we go ahead and calculate that, we find that it is negative, negative 1.903 and a negative and a negative make a positive. So the POH is 1.903. 
Now we want to find the pH as well. Well, remember this, you don't have to go through cal calculations for this. Once you found one, you can go ahead and figure out the pH directly from this relationship. The two of them have to add together to give you 14. So we don't need to know the hydronium ion concentration because we've already calculated the pOH. So we know that they have to add to 14. So we can solve that equation for the pH. The pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, which we bring over to the other side. And then that means that the pH would be given by 14 minus 1.903 and give us 12.1 for the pH. So it would be a based on our numbers. Remember, the larger the pH, the more basic solution. And we would expect potassium hydroxide with OH ions that would be separating out here should be a very basic solution. Now, how do we go about measuring these? We've shown how to calculate them, but how do we actually measure them in real life? Well, there you can use things like a pH meter as shown here that you can put those you can put this in the solution. It has a detector that goes down into the solution and then it will read off the pH here that in this case we're looking at a rather basic solution at a 10.33. We can also use things uh, easier that are essentially a pH strip. So these are little strips of material that you can then use and you can take these strips here and put this in a liquid and it will change color. The redder it is, then the more acidic it is and the closer it turns to a purple, then the more basic it is. Now, as you might guess, that is not near as accurate as the one we showed previously because this gives you a precise 10.33 measurement. However, these are certainly far less expensive and very easy to see the change that occurs to be able to measure and get a rough idea of whether something is an acid or a base. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at this time is that an acid donates a proton to another compound. A base is something that accepts a proton from another compound. The pH is the measure of the concentration of the hydronium ion. So the lower pH means very acidic and the higher pH means a very basic substances. And we looked at some ways to, to calculate the pH and the pOH or the concentrations and or to measure them by different methods including, including detectors and pH strips. So that, that concludes this lecture on acids and bases and pH. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.